Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. There's a lot of ground to cover, and I, I'm the only one over here trying to, <laughs> trying to present an alternative right now. But uh, um, let me just note that after 9-11, uh, I think that we could say that there's no other country in the world that did more to help cooperate and had a major influence on what we did to defeat the Taliban and kick Saddam Hussein out. Uh, they made their bases available to us. They made their, uh, uh, because we came in from the north instead of through Pakistan. And the reason we didn't go through Pakistan, because Pakistan and Saudi Arabia were the ones who invented the Taliban, who we were at that point going to war with because they'd slaughtered 3,000 Americans, their Taliban. And also the Saudis, who of almost all of the hijackers were Saudis. Okay. And, but Russia stepped up. That doesn't count, does it? No, we're good friends with the Saudis and the PACs. Uh, let me just get into a couple of things. Uh, I'm sorry the gentleman had to leave. I, I don't know if he, it sounded like he was or was not suggesting that the Russians were culpable in the shooting down of that aircraft. Uh, but let's just note, uh, we support a lot of groups all over the world. Do we have a double standard here? Is that what it's all about? If the Russians can do something, but that that whole that doesn't apply to the United States when we support people and they do some bad things with the weapons that we give them. I think that's if, if I was a Russian listening to this, that's what I would come to the conclusion of. Uh, oh, the Americans have this double standard. Uh, I'm going to ask one question. I'm sorry again, very quickly. Can any of you tell me why the Russians gave $150 million to the Clinton Foundation when Hillary Clinton was the Secretary of State? Can anybody tell me in the witness stand? Okay, well, that shouldn't be out, out of the equation. When we're trying to discuss what Russia does, we know that that happened, but it, even though there seems to be an effort to try to, <laughs> to cover that up, and now we don't pay any attention to it. Uh, Assad. Uh, is Assad demonstrably different than any number of five or six other dictatorships in the Middle East? Would, is he capable more? Or if any of those people had uprisings in their country, uh, is he capable, is he doing more than what they would do to uh, destroy their, the uh, uprising? Sir, yes, sir. Yep, Chairman right Rohrabacher, I'd, I'd note that Assad has used chemical weapons twice against his own population, and mm -hmm. that seems to be more than anyone else ha has done in the region. Uh, how many people were killed in that? So we're weapons? talking about, yeah, using chemical weapons is bad. Using a rocket bomb that kills 10 times as many people is bad as well. And the bottom line is, I've heard this uh, chemical biological, yes, I am against chemical biological weapons. But what's important here is the number of people who are being, civilians especially, who are being killed to intimidate them. And the bottom line is, Assad is a bad guy, so are a bunch of regimes that we support there. And uh, let us also suggest this, that Assad has had a chance to be a force for peace in, in, with Israel all of these decades. And that should be taken into consideration when we judge Assad. And, uh, and also, uh, let us note about Russian support for Assad. Um, the Russians tried to convince us, look, we can make a deal with Gaddafi. It'll settle things down. It, it's better than what will happen if Gaddafi's overthrown. Same thing with Saddam Hussein. Now we say Assad. Now they're trying to tell us that's true with Assad. What are the chances, think about what are the chances Assad's overthrown that you get a radical Islamic government that hates us and is willing to support terrorism? The chances are very high. And when we discuss these things, those things should be in our calculation as to what our policies should be. And they don't seem to be. What we seem to be talking about is everybody's, uh, the, the faults of anybody who's associated with Russia, let's note that we have some of those same faults so we shouldn't have a double standard. And I noticed that the last time, uh, Mr. Chairman, that we had uh, uh, this, this whole bombing attack, I remember there was 84 civilians that were killed in that hospital, and nobody, is, nobody would justify that. But, but I would have to suggest that since we invaded 
and try to get out of Saddam Hussein, and even right now in our efforts, uh, air efforts, uh, to try to overcome the, the radicals and Assad's forces, many, many thousands of people, civilians, have lost their lives to American bombs. Not intentionally, that we wanted to single them out, but that that was the byproduct of that. And I, I just suggest that if we want to have peace in this world, we need to, especially with radical Islam the way it is, we better work and not have a double standard and try to work with people as we needed to when we defeated Hitler. And otherwise, Hitler would not have been destroyed, and Stalin was really an awful person. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Chair